Hello my friends, Chris here from Cuts and Colors. The world seems to be out of order because of the coronavirus and me staying at home I thought, well maybe, why not share my beautiful Il Manigello, um collection of Taro, Taroki, Trionfi, whatever, historical, um, handmade beautiful decks for everyone <laughs> to enjoy. Um, for many people, Il Manigello decks are somewhat the holy grail of taro collectibles. <laughs> because, um, well, all of these decks are beautiful creations and pieces of art and um, history, of course. And as you can see, as of now, I'm having five decks in my collection and we will go through them. And I will show um, cards from each of the decks that you can see here. So, um, my favorite cards of course and then also um, cards that are special to the deck or well we'll see so I'm not showing every card from each of these decks here because <laughs> this would be far too long it's just to give you give you a picture some impressions and yeah maybe if you want to buy um, an Il Manigello deck yourself and you're not sure which one to get um, maybe this video may help you or just help you to have a good time. <laughs> so what we have here, just a quick overview, is um, the Visconti di Modrone Taro, the Soprafino, the Neoclassico, the Corte de Tau Rochi, Tarocchi, and then the Visconti Sforza. So, we will start with the lovely Soprafino. This one comes in a beautiful box, sturdy. And then you get one of the cards here with the beautiful wax seal with gold on it. There you have the cards, the back of the cards. And here are some examples. The beautiful Seven of Pentacles, and as you can see, or coins, <laughs> I have to say, um, what you can see is that they are arranged in the style of the Tarot de Marseille order of objects. So you get the four plus the three, and then beautiful flowers here. This is the Five of Cups, very beautiful, with the flowers coming out of the cup. Three of Wands, again Marseille style, three wands crossing each other, and then beautiful flowers and greenery. The Ace of Wands, which I love because, yeah, because of the color, this very strange <laughs> minty green in combination with the red here in this well, this whole deck has an aged feel to it, creamy background color, and then you get this very minty green and a very big club, but I like it. Beautiful star card in purple tones and lilacs. The devil here, fighting in a way with demons and dragons and whatnot. Beautiful sun with some spilled red wine maybe, we don't know. <laughs> and a lovely couple, no children. The hermit with the lantern here. And I like this burnt orange and brown color. Beautiful two of cups here standing on a table and the depiction of the two, well, we don't know, sea creatures, fishes, dolphins, or here they look like lion heads. Four of pentacles with a globe and a cross. It's 
stability, earthly matters. The beautiful Ace of Cups, really looking like some sort of a church cup, gothic in a way. Whoops. Page of Cups, beautiful, in a pink dress. <laughs> The funny moon card, because La Luna, <laughs> we get the lobster here, or the crayfish in form of a, of a lobster, served on a silver plate. <laughs> Ace of coins, beautiful. The two of coins here with the band or the ribbon. And then page of wands of Fante di Bastoni with a very, very big club, as we are used to from a Sadex. Um, well, just the style itself is different. And as mentioned before, the paper here looks aged and spilled. And yeah, this deck, also the cardstock, it's very, very thick paper. So when you hold these cards in your hand, you really get the impression that this deck is about a hundred years old or even older and has been used many many times at different occasions <laughs> lovely reproduction then the Tarocco Neo Classico <clears throat> almost the same box here sturdy box beautiful gray one card on top with the seal Nice back of the cards, and here we go. So, this is a pip deck um, without Marseille style pips, just plain pips in, in, in different, sometimes unusual placements. So, for the four swords here, for example, the swords are not crossing each other, and the swords are not curved, they are straight swords all pointing to the middle, but then you get those two additional lovely flowers here. The lovers is nice because here you get a woman having to choose maybe between two men and then Cupid above. It's mostly the other way around with historical decks, a man having to choose or make a decision between two women. Beautiful four of cups here with the sun and the moon united. Queen of Spades or Swords, beautiful, as you can see, the primary colors here, a somewhat earthy green and some ochre yellow, and then the blue here and the pink or red. Very delicate Empress here in a white dress, quite unusual. and. The judgment card is unusual too because here the people are in the fire. Woo! Sorry. <laughs> the fire made me. <laughs> so here we have the lunar card or the moon. Beautiful because here, as you can see in the bottom of the card, you really get this watercolor bleeding effect of the land and the sand and the water and then a very beautiful face in the moon the hermit in his brown robe or cloak with a lantern and an old book and here at the bottom you get snakes or serpents and all the cards have this beautiful border around them again an unusual depiction here is the tower no fire no lightning no people falling out of the tower no signs of destruction just the tower well maybe the the top of the tower is missing we don't know exactly but <laughs> it's more like a fairy tale tower kelly from the truth and story um refer to this as Rapunzel's Tower and I can see that um, it looks a bit more like um, the tower from the from the Lenormand. Oh, I did it again. Sorry folks, sorry, sorry, sorry. 
the sun. Two children here, but no six packs. Beautiful justice card. The devil, like the tap dancing devil in a way. <laughs> and the four of pentacles of coins here with an anchor and a caduceus. Very interesting. Like the four of cups before with the additional sun and the moon. I'm not sure why there is this importance laid on the fours in this deck. But as you can see, um, these cards are in a way, well, classic. It's the neoclassic deck. <laughs> so not heavily on decoration and floral stuff. Plain, but beautiful. And again, like in the Soprafina deck before, the, the paper is textured very thick, like very thick watercolor paper, smooth. And it looks aged, very queen, creamy, yellowy, with some dots and blurbs and whatnot here. Imperfections. But those imperfections make this fee deck feel really authentic. And yeah, it again feels like you're holding a deck from, from, <laughs> I don't know, 1810. <laughs> So it really feels like you're holding a deck that is 200 years old in a way. Beautiful. Then, a more modern take on the tarot with La Corte de Taroki. Ta-da! Again, the sturdy grey box here, the seal. And this time it's not the front of one of the cards, but the back of one of the cards with the with the owl and the crescent moon, which is lovely. So here, this is on the back of the cards. So here we have the seven of cups. And as you can see, again, another way of depicting the pips. So not arrangements like in the neoclassic, not like in the Tower de Marseille, as we have seen in the Soprafino. This is a totally different way. So you get the cups, but they are on a table. Here's some knot work going on. And then when you compare this to the three of cups, they again are standing on a table, but the cups are different and the top of the card is different. This looks more like maybe a chapel or a church or a castle window. Two of coins here. Beautiful illustrated coins. Oh no, 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 no. I don't know what I'm doing. Please excuse me. Six of coins. Again, different ornaments in the coins. The ace of coins with a dragon <laughs> biting into the coin. <laughs> cute and funny. Three of swords. So again, here we have straight thoughts. Um, and on top you get different, well, hints or scenes or symbols. So in this case, in the three of swords, we get a lion. So I'm <laughs> pretty sure um, people following the Rider Waite Smith tradition, associating the three of thoughts with um, heartbreak, sorrow, loss and whatnot. The line might be confusing, but this is another system. So, just a bit of coffee here. Beautiful queen of coins with her dog. And as you can see, uh, most of the cards have a somewhat medieval feel to them. An aged feel, definitely. But it's also a bit naive and childlike, but in a good way. So here we have the page or knave of wands with this club. He almost holds this <laughs> club like a flute. And an oak here, I guess. And a little bunny. I never I never thought that before. That's strange, yeah. Yeah, a white rabbit. Funny. The beautiful high priestess or popes. 
with the Book of Wisdom. And then here again an owl and the moon and just a beautiful face. And the Knight of Cup, like one of the Templar Knights. The moon with all the faces and phases, faces and phases of the moon. Beautiful. And a ah, little bit weird crayfish or lobster here and the dogs. The beautiful fool card here. With the cute dog. And the Queen of Wands with the lovely blue flower. The cardstock here is very thick, even thicker than the Superfino Neo Classico. Very thick, cardboardy paper, rough and textured, even. Maybe you can see, yeah, you can see this. So here you can see the texture of the paper and all in all the color scheme of this deck as you can see it's, it's very earthy, very natural, a lot of browns and, and taupe and green, olive, teal, yeah but all in all very earthy feeling. Yeah, great deck, beautiful deck. So, <clears throat> then we get to maybe the classic deck, the Visconti Sforza. <clears throat> it's not a deck that's on the cheap side, I have to say. <laughs> it's quite pricey, but you get a lot for the price. And if you're into Tower history and craftsmanship, an art, then it's really, really worth the price you're paying. With the beautiful burnt paper here, the seal again, one of the cards on top. But here you don't get this small gray box because the cards are much, much bigger. You get a very, very sturdy brown box looking aged. By the way, these boxes are handmade. Great, isn't it? The back of the deck. And so now, let's have a look. So, let's start. And what you can directly see here. So, this is today known as Trump number 18, as you can see here. The trumps or triomphi, triomphi of the original Visconti deck do not have numbers or titles. So what we get here is Luna or Diana, the huntress, the goddess of the moon. And there are no towers, no dogs, no crayfish. It's just the depiction of Luna or the moon goddess. And as you can see, um, what they did here is they used gold ink so it's a bit shiny because the originals they were gold in the background so it's a bit shiny the golden parts of the background and and on the depictions but it's not distracting it's not too shiny or even like a mirror or something it's not reflecting too much but you can see that there's a difference um, as of now, I don't have the Mythical Creatures deck from Baba Studios, but I think that the cold stamping on this spe uh, special deck, the Mythical Creatures deck, is similar to the metallic ink they used for this. So then we have Lady Fortune's Wheel, the Wheel of Fortuna, the Goddess. Sometimes you're above, sometimes you're below, sometimes you're moving up, sometimes you're moving down. <laughs> and fortune is in the middle. And yeah, <clears throat> her eyes are seared. 
iconic hermit card, Father Time, with an hourglass and a walking stick and this very, very intense blue, lapis lazuli blue color. And it's, it's hard to see, but here in the background, oh, I have to say, my cam really focuses well. I like that. There's a forest at the bottom of the card in the background. And what you can see here is there's even, whoops, here. Very, very gentle line work depicting flowers and blossoms. So very, very much detail everywhere. Yeah. <clears throat> and we should not forget that this blue color, which is not called royal blue for nothing, was really made from lapis lazuli. So it was a very, very expensive color combined with, with gold. So gold and lapis lazuli, you can guess this was a very, very precious, <laughs> precious deck and well, it was made by, by royalty, for a reason. <laughs> the Fool of the Madman, Il Matteo. Not quite the fool that we are used to from, from more modern decks. Then the world of the New Jerusalem, or the New Found Paradise, with the pink castle <laughs> in the sphere on an island and then two two caribs angels the knight of swords in full armor and what you can see here you get the gold of the background and the armor is silver so again metallic ink used not distracting but just highlighting the armor of this very young no, uh, not knight, king of swords. Two of cups, here again, the cups are metallic ink, and here those little dots in the flowers are golden. And then on the ribbon here we can read Amor Mio. Mio, M-Y-O, my love. The queen of wands. Again, golden background and then a silvery dress. Quite interesting color combination with this lilac and then the red shoes and then the green and the blue and the silver. Whoa, quite fancy. The Ace of Cups, like a fountain. Again, golden. Eight of Wands, so this is, of course, a pip deck. And here you can see the very intricate diamond shape that's created by the overlaid wands. Three of cups, four of swords, four of cups. So you can get a picture, six of wands, beautiful floral stuff going on. Very decorative. Ace of Thoughts, even the ribbon here has this metallic effect. The Queen of Swords in her white dress and a very childlike, young, innocent face in a way. And then her armor here is also metallic silver. And last but not least, the Strength of Fortitude card, depicting Hercules and the Nemeic Lion. So no woman here. There you have it, a classic deck. And then, last but not least, camera shaking again. Oh my, another zip of coffee.
before we move on, 25 minutes. <laughs> the Visconti di Modrone deck. <clears throat> Again, this brown handmade sturdy box seal. Card. Gorgeousness. The back of the cards. And some examples. So what's interesting about this deck is that the original um, had more than just four court cards per, um, per suit. So instead of just having a page and a knight, you also have a female page or maiden and a female knight or lady or I don't know. So what we get here is the female page or the maiden of swords. Again, you can see the golden background. This time it's not a metallic ink that's used. It's very, very matte. And here the female knight of wands with a beautiful green headdress or crown on a white horse. One of the few surviving trumps, the world, or in this case, the fame card, fame above here in the heavens, and then the scene of earth or a country with a haven here and different buildings. The Empress, a lot of gold, the Emperor, silver, and gold, <laughs> the judgment card with this pink, well, whatever it is, castle in a way, but then we get the grave in front also being pink. The very beautiful and iconic lover's card here. The two meeting under this pink canopy with a little dog and Cupid. Death on a horse with a very, very large scythe here. And interesting to me, the strength card is riding the lion, just like in the Toth deck from Crowley. So Crowley was not the first to depict the strength, or as he calls it, lust card, um, with a woman riding the line. No, we already had that in the 15th century. Interesting. And the female page or maiden of cups in this beautiful scarlet red rope. And gold on gold is hard to see, so... If we take a look here, closer look, you can see she really is holding a cup, a golden cup in front of a golden background, which makes it hard to see. And the cardstock here is really like paper, like watercolor paper. So, and it's not coated or anything. So if, sorry again, if these cards get wet, they are damaged. So please be careful with this cards. And um, I have to say, many, many trumps here are lost from this deck. And Ulman Gallo did not recreate the missing trumps. Los Garabello did this. Um, so if you want this deck for reading, be aware that there are cards missing and that the cards themselves are not well protected so you might damage them if you're not handling them carefully before we end this video it's almost 30 minutes i didn't say anything about the cardstock of the visconti this is very very thick cardstock you can't even bend it so be careful as you can see here starts chipping a bit because I'm shuffling the cards but that's okay I like an aged feel to these cards yeah but these are really really thick as you can hear 
this is really great and heavy cardstock. Made to last, <laughs> well, not forever maybe, but for a very long time. So, there you have it. Just the last picture here of all the decks together. This was a walkthrough and review of my Ilmenigel decks. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it inspirational. Um, maybe you saw some cards from decks um, you haven't seen before. <laughs> or you are unsure if you want to purchase them. Um, all in all, I can say Ilmenigelo stuff is great. If you're into tarot history, if you're into tarot art, if you're just into art and beautiful things, um, these decks are great. And yeah, feel free to leave a comment in the comments below. Do you have Ilmenigello decks? Which ones do you have? Um, which ones do you like and love? And yeah, let's stay in contact. And yeah, please stay healthy and well in this troubled times we are in. And all the best. And yeah, see you soon. Bye.